패트릭 윈스턴 교수님은 MIT에서 AI 연구소 소장으로 역임하고 계셨습니다. 2019년에 76세의 나이로 별세를 하셨죠. 로봇에게 사람과 같은 지능을 심는 방법을 연구했던 이 교수님은 이 파생 분야로 로봇이 사람과 같이 말을 하는 방법을 연구했고 이는 결국 어떻게 사람이 다른 사람에게 더 말을 잘할 수 있을까 라는 질문과 평행선상에 있었던 것이었죠. 윈스턴 교수님은 후에 사람의 커뮤니케이션에 관한 책을 저술하셨고 별세를 하기 전에 MIT 오픈코스에서 저자 직강으로 1시간짜리 강의를 촬영하셨습니다. Your success in life will be determined largely by your ability to speak, your ability to write, and the quality of your ideas in that order. 방금 언급하셨던 세 가지 분야는 개개인의 지식, 연습의 양, 그리고 재능에 따라서 결정된다고 합니다. 알파벳 크기를 보시면 아시겠지만 지식이 가장 중요한 요소라고 주장을 하십니다. This point uh, came to me uh, suddenly a few decades ago when I was skiing at Sun Valley. I had heard that it was celebrity weekend and one of the celebrities was a was a Mary Lou Retton, famous Olympic gymnast, perfect tens in the vault. And I heard that she was a novice at skiing, so when the opportune moment arrived, I looked over on a novice slope and saw this young woman who, when she became unbalanced, went like that. And I said, that's got to be her. That must be the gymnast. And I was a better skier because I had the K, and I had the P, and all she had was the T. So you can get a lot better than people who may have inherent talents if you have the right amount of knowledge. 처음 이야기를 시작할 때 농담으로 시작을 하지 말라고 합니다. 서로 처음 만난 사람들은 이 사람이 어떤 사람인지 탐색을 하고 목소리 음역대에 적응하는 시간을 갖기 때문에 농담을 던지면 반응이 미지근할 수 있다는 것이죠. 강연 이야기의 시작은 상대방이 무엇을 얻어갈 수 있는지를 나열하는 게 효과적이라고 합니다. At the end of this 60 minutes, you will know things about speaking you don't know now, and something among those things you know will be, make a difference in your life. Yeah, that's an empowerment promise. So that's the best way to start. 앞으로 나올 세 가지 방법은 모든 연설, 프레젠테이션, 강연에 적용을 해야 합니다. 첫 번째로는 같은 주제를 여러 번 반복해서 상대방에게 전달하라는 것입니다. Well, there are many reasons. One of which is, at any given moment, about 20% of you will be fogged out no matter what the lecture is. So if you want to ensure that the probability that everybody gets it is high, you need to say it three times. 두 번째로는 듣는 사람이 정보의 홍수에 빠지지 않게 나침반 같은 이야기의 구조를 명확하게 제시하라는 겁니다. So I might, in this talk, say something about this being my outline. The first thing we're going to do is talk about how to start. Then we're going to deal with these four samples. And among these four samples, I've talked about the first idea, that's cycling. So I'm enumerating, I'm providing numbers, I'm giving you a sense that there's a seam in the talk and you can get back, back on. 마지막 세 번째 규칙이 어떤 것인지 같이 한번 들어봅시다. Yes. Ask a question. Ask a question, yes. Thank you. So ask a question. And so I will ask a question. How, how much dead air can there be? How long can I pause? Uh, I counted seven seconds. It seems like an eternity to me to wait and not say anything for, ten, for seven seconds. But that's the, the standard amount of time you can wait for an answer. And of course, the question has to be carefully chosen. It can't be too obvious, because then people will be embarrassed to say it, uh, what the answer is. It can't be too hard, because then nobody will have anything to say. 추가로 언급을 하자면 여러분이 동경하는 연설가들의 문장을 분석해서 자신의 기술로 만들 수 있다면 메시지 전달 능력에도 비약적인 발전이 있겠죠. 다음으로 넘어가서 여러분들이 사용할 수 있는 도구들을 다뤄보겠습니다. 강의 시간은 언제가 제일 적절할까요? 11 a.m. Yeah. And the reason is most people at MIT are awake by then and hardly anyone has gone back to sleep. It's not right after a meal. People aren't fatigued from this or that. It's a great time to have a lecture. So that brings me next to the question of uh, what about the place? And the most important thing about the place is that it be well lit. This room is well lit. The problem with the other kinds of rooms is that we humans, uh, whenever the lights go down, or whenever the room is dimly lighted, it signals that we should go to sleep. So whenever I go somewhere to give a talk, even today, the first thing I do when I speak to the audiovisual people is say, keep the lights full up. 강연을 할때 최악의 상황들을 가정해서 대응할 수 있게 준비를 하라고 합니다. Here this morning, I did what I typically do. I imagined that all the seats were filled with disinterested farm animals. <웃음> that way I knew that no matter how bad it was, it wouldn't be as bad as that. 
칠판을 적극적으로 활용하는 것도 좋은 방법입니다. 즉각적인 그래프를 구현할 수도 있고 글씨를 쓰는 속도가 사람이 이해를 하는 속도와 비슷하기 때문에 정보를 받아들이기에도 좋고 타겟을 지적해서 집중도의 극대화를 실현할 수도 있죠. 한 연극의 시작은 난로 안에 대본을 던지는 것으로 시작이 됩니다. 극 중에 긴장감이 올라가면서 불꽃은 같이 활활 타올라 관객의 기억 속에 각인이 되는 것이죠. 마찬가지로 내용을 전달할 때 상대방의 이해를 돕기 위해 소품을 적극적으로 활용하라고 합니다. There's one from when I was taking 801. Alan Lazarus was the instructor at the time. And he was talking about the conservation of energy, kinetic and potential. And there was a long wire in the ceiling in 26100. Uh, attached to a, a much bigger steel ball, but one not unlike this. And Lazarus uh, took the ball up against the wall like this. He put his head flat against the wall to steady himself. And then uh, he let go. And the pendulum takes many seconds to go over and back. And then uh, gently uh, kisses Lazarus's nose. And so you have many seconds to think, this guy really believes in the conservation of energy. <laughs> 우리가 소품을 활용한 강의를 봤을 때더 기억에 잘 남는 이유는 거울 신경 세포가 활성화되어 있기 때문이라고 주장을 하십니다. When you're sitting up there watching me right on the board, all those little mirror neurons in your head, I believe, become actuated, and you can feel yourself writing on the blackboard. And even more so, uh, when I uh, talk about this uh, steel ball going that way and this way, you, you can you can you can feel the ball as if you were me. And you can't do that with a slide. You can't do it with a picture. You need to see it. In, in a physical world. 다음으로 가장 많이 사용되는 슬라이드 쇼에 대해서 언급을 하십니다. And I, as I was there for a few minutes, uh, someone came up to me and said, uh, "Are you Professor Winston?" "I think so," I said. <laughs> "I don't know. I guess I was trying to be funny." In any event, uh, he said, "I'm on my way to Europe to give a job talk. Would you mind uh, critiquing my slides?" "Not at all," I said. "You have too many, and they have too many words." "How did you know?" he said, thinking perhaps I'd seen a talk of his before. "I hadn't." Uh, my reply was because it's always true. There are always too many slides, always too many words. 슬라이드 쇼를 만들 때 범죄라는 단어까지 사용하시면서 하면 안 되는 것들을 언급했습니다. 글자 도배하지 말고 자잘한 로고, 점, 타이틀 등 불필요한 것들을 싹다 쳐내라고 하십니다. Student of mine did an experiment a few years ago. Uh, he taught some students some uh, web-based programming ideas. Half the information was on slides. He said the other half. And then for a control group, he reversed it. And the question was, what did the subjects, that is to say, freshmen in his fraternity, what did the subjects remember best? What he said, or what they read on the slide? And the answer is, what they read on the slide. When their slides have a lot of material on it, they don't pay attention to the speaker. In fact, in the after action report, one of the subjects said, I wish you hadn't talked so much, it was distracting. <laughs> 슬라이드 쇼의 폰트는 큼지막하게 해서 정말 핵심적인 내용만 담고 레이저 포인터는 사용하지 말라고 합니다. And when you do that, you lose, uh, you lose contact with the audience. You don't want to do it. I have no eye contact, no engagement, nothing. 지시봉도 많이 사용하는데 이것도 사용하지 말라고 합니다. People would go waving these things around and pretty soon it became almost like a baton twirling contest. So here's what, here's what I recommended in the old days for dealing with this kind of pointer. This example of the use of a prop. <웃음> 올바른 슬라이드는 보기와 같습니다. 포인터를 사용하는 대신 화살표를 삽입해서 청중들과 최대한 교감을 하려고 노력하는 게 중요합니다. Here's a talk uh, I attended a while back in Stata. Notice that the speaker is uh, far away from the slides. The speaker is using a laser pointer. And you say to me, well, what's happening here? It's by the way the 80th, 80th slide in the presentation. Notice that it's dense with words. This is the first of 10 conclusion slides. <laughs> so uh, what's the audience reaction? That's the sponsor of the meeting. He's reading his email. This is the co-sponsor of the meeting. He's examining the lunch menu. <laughs> What about this person? This person looks like he's paying attention, but just because it's a still picture. If you were to see a video, what you would see is something like this. So yeah, it, it, it does happen. 
다음 전달 방식으로 넘어가 보겠습니다. 무미건조하게 발표를 끝낼 수도 있겠지만 청중들에게 이 강의를 통해서 얻어갈 수 있는 기대를 설정하고 영감을 불어넣을 수 있게 설계를 하는 게 정말 중요하다고 합니다. Let me give you an example of a lecture that starts this way. I'm talking about resource allocation. It's the same sort of stuff you would think of when you're. So it's the same sort of ideas you would need if you're allocating an aircraft to a flight schedule or trying to schedule a factory or something like that. But the example is putting colors on the states in the United States. without any bordering states having the same color. So here goes. This is what I show in the beginning of the class. This is a way of doing that coloring. And you might say, well, why don't we wait till it finishes? Would you like to do that? No? <coughs> well, we're not going to wait till it finishes because the sun will have exploded and consumed the earth before this program finishes. <laughs> But with a slight adjustment to how the program works, which I tell my students, you will understand in the next 50 minutes, this is what you get. Isn't that cool? You know, you got, you, got to be, you got to be amazed by stuff that takes a computation from longer than the lifetime of the solar system into a few seconds. So that's what I mean by providing a promise up front and expressing some passion about what you're talking about. A few years ago, uh, uh, our department chairman said, would you please uh, give this talk to uh, a new faculty and be sure to emphasize what it takes to inspire students. And strangely, I hadn't thought about that question before, so I started a survey. I talked to some of my incoming freshman advisees, and I talked to the senior faculty and everything in between about how they've been inspired. What I found from the uh, incoming freshmen is that they were inspired by some high school teacher who told them they could do it. What I found in the senior faculty, they um, were inspired by someone who helped them to see a problem in a new way. And what I saw from everyone is that they were inspired when someone exhibited passion about what they were doing. 자신의 프레젠테이션을 제3자에게 평가받는 것도 정말 좋은 방법이겠죠. So you need to get together some friends who don't know what you're doing and have them well you start the practice session by saying if you can't make me cry I won't value you as a friend anymore. <웃음> and then when you get to the faculty uh, on a uh, oral exam it will be easy. 윈스턴 교수님이 해군 과학자문단에 소속되어 있을 때 동료 과학자들에게 어떤 사람에게 일자리를 주고 싶냐고 물어봤습니다. 대답은 즉각적으로 돌아왔죠. 5분 안에 본인의 비전과 지금까지 뭘 해왔는지 잘 설명할 수 있다면 일자리를 줄수 있다는 것이었습니다. 교수님은 비전의 답을 두 가지로 묶어서 대답을 하라고 합니다. 하나는 문제점 제시이고 다른 하나는 그에 대한 접근 방법입니다. So the problem is understanding the nature of human intelligence and the approach is asking questions about what makes us different from chimpanzees and Neanderthals. Is it merely a matter of quantity or are we just a little bit smarter in some continuous way? Or do we have something that's fundamentally different that chimpanzees don't have and Neanderthals either? And the answer is yes, we do have something different. We are symbolic creatures and because we're symbolic creatures we can, um, we can uh, build symbolic descriptions of relations and events. We can string them together and make stories. And because we can make stories, that's what makes us different. So that's, that's, that's my stump speech. That's how I start most of my talks on my own personal research. 과거에 본인이 무엇을 해왔는지에 대한 대답은 꼭 자신이 했던 것을 설명하지 않아도 되고 본인이 생각하기에 실질적인 솔루션을 제공하라고 합니다. An example. Here's what needs to be done. We need to specify some behavior. We need to enumerate the, the constraints that make it possible to deal with that behavior. We have to implement a system because we're engineers and we don't think that we've understood something unless we can build it. And we built such a system and we're about to demonstrate it to you today. That would be an example of enumerating a series of steps needed to realize the vision. 이제 마지막 목차입니다. 이야기를 어떻게 마무리해야 되는지에 대한 답입니다. How about this one? This is the worst possible way to end a talk. Because this slide can be up there for 20 minutes. I've seen it happen. It squanders real estate. It squanders an opportunity to tell people who you are. It's, it's just... What about this one? I often see it. I've never seen anybody write it down. Oh my God. Even worse. All of these lines do nothing for you. They waste an opportunity for you to tell people, to leave people with, what you, with who you are. 그냥 감사합니다로 끝내는 건 좋지 않다고 합니다. I don't recommend it. It's a weak move. You will not go to hell if you conclude your talk by saying thank you, but it's a weak move, and here's why. When you say thank you, even worse, thank you for listening, 
it suggests that everybody has stayed that long out of politeness and that they had a profound desire to be somewhere else, but they're so polite they stuck it out. And that's what you're thanking them for. 수준 있는 연설가 주지사 크리스티와 클린턴의 연설을 보면서 이 사람들은 연설을 어떻게 마무리했는지 같이 한번 봅시다. And together everybody together. We will stand up once again for American greatness for our children and grandchildren. God bless you and God bless America. If that is what you want, if that is what you believe, you must vote and you must reelect President Barack Obama. God bless you and God bless America. What what are we going to take away from this? Well, um, I suppose I could conclude this talk by saying uh, God bless you and God bless America. <laughs> Institute of Technology. But, uh... 앞에 두 연설처럼 머릿속에 박히는 문구를 사용해도 되고 아니면 청자들에 대한 나의 생각을 존경과 버무려서 우아하게 마무리하는 것도 좋은 방법이라고 합니다. Um, you know what? Uh, I'm glad you're here. And, and the reason is by being here, I think you have uh, demonstrated an understanding that uh, how you present and how you package your ideas is an important thing. And I salute you for that. And uh, I uh, suggest that you uh, come back again and bring your friends.